In this example, we're told we have a rigid L-shaped gate, so this gate right here, and it's hinged at this point, so it can rotate about that hinge there. We're given the geometry. We're told that the gate's located a distance capital H from the free surface here. Uh, the gate height is h, little h. The gate uh, length here is little l. Uh, and there's a force that's being applied to hold that gate in place. So you know, we have all this water in here that's acting to push the gate to rotate about the hinge in that direction. And we have to apply a force here in order to keep it from rotating. And we're asked to find what is, um, what we're trying to find here is what is that force required to hold the gate in place? Okay, so this is a balancing moments problem. We don't want the, the gate to rotate about the hinge. So what we want to do is uh, some moments about the hinge and set it equal to zero. So that, that'll be just when the gate's about to rotate. So the forces that will act to rotate the gate will be, uh, of course, we have this force F that we're applying. So let me do that moment first. So that moment will act in, well, first of all, let's put a coordinate system on here. So I'll put Y as, oops, I'll put Y acting downward from the free surface, Y, and X acting that way. So when we do that, Z is coming out of the page. So this force will create a negative moment in the z direction, and that moment uh, about the hinge will actually be a distance h, so oops, it could be minus h times f, because I'm, I'm doing moments about the hinge here, and that distance, the moment arm is h, little h, there's our force, and that's going to create a moment in the negative z direction. So that's that moment. There will also be a moment due to, let's, uh, let's do the force down here on this part of the gate. Now, since that's at a constant height or depth from the free surface, the pressure there will be a constant. And so the moment caused by that uh, pressure, well, first of all, that pressure force there, let's write it off to the side. That will be, uh, in terms of gauge pressure, it will be the distance from the, uh, it'll be a row of the water times g times the distance from the free surface, which will be capital H plus little h. Capital H plus little h. So that's, let me move that around. Oops. Try that again. Uh, okay, well, it's staying where it is. Okay, so anyway, that's the pressure on that part of the surface here. And we just know from, uh, from previous work that the location of that center of pressure will be right in the middle of the gate there. And the pressure force, since it's constant, will just be the pressure times the area of the gate, which will be L times the distance in and out of the page. So let's write that term out. And that'll be given as a moment in the positive Z direction because it's going to act to rotate the gate in a counterclockwise manner about the hinge. So that moment will be the moment arm, which will be one half L, because that's the distance between the center of pressure and where the hinge is located. So that distance right there, that's one half L. And then the force there will be the pressure multiplied by the area, which will be L times W, which is the distance in and out of the page. So that is the moment due to, so, so again, here's the moment arm, one half L, which is that distance. And here is the pressure acting on this part. That's a row G H plus little h, because that's the distance from the free surface down to the bottom part of the gate. And here's the area of the gate. That's the L times the distance in and out of the page W. All right. And then uh, we have one last moment. I'm going to erase what I've done here so I can draw this a little more cleanly. We also have this moment caused by the pressure on the gate from the hinge on downward and that part. And notice when I, draw, when I drew this, I didn't start at zero here because we're some distance capital H below the free surface. So it doesn't start at zero. The pressure here is actually rho G capital H, the gauge pressure. And then it'll increase with depth. Uh, since we're, you know, 
adding more weight of the water, so the pressure increases. So to write out what that moment is, I'm going to just write it as an integral. That moment will also act in the positive z direction because it's it's trying to rotate the the hinge about the hinge, rotate the gate about the hinge in the uh, counterclockwise direction. So that'll be a plus, and I'm going to integrate integrate as y goes from capital H to capital H plus little h. The moment arm from the hinge will be um, y minus capital H. So that's the moment arm from the hinge, right? Because y starts here at the free surface, and the hinge is located at a distance capital H. So the moment arm from the hinge will be y minus h. And then the little bit of force, so I'm, what I'm going to do is consider this little bit of area right here. That distance is dy. So the little bit of pressure force acting on that little bit of area there, this is our dfp, that little bit of pressure force will be the pressure there, which is a rho g times the depth to that point, which is y. So that's the pressure times the area of that little element, which will be dy times w. That's the distance in and out of the page. So let me just review that quickly. We have the moment arm, y minus h. That's the moment arm from the hinge. So it's this distance out to this uh, dfp term from the hinge. So that's y minus h. Then we multiply it by the pressure, which is rho gy. That's just the distance down to that little bit of area, times the area of that little piece of the hinge. Uh, I'm sorry, little piece of the gate, which will be dy times w, which is the distance in and out of the page. And we integrate that as y goes from capital H, which is where the hinge starts, to h plus little h, which is the bottom here. So now we have all the terms that we need in that equation, and we can go ahead and do the math at that part, um, at this point. So the only math that we have to do is really for this integral. So let's go ahead and work that out. So uh, first of all, I'll bring this f times h term to the left-hand side. Then I'll expand this term. So that'll be 1 half rho g capital H plus little h L squared times w. And then we need to expand that integral term. So that'll be rho h2o g times w, we can bring those outside the integral. And then what we're left with inside the integral is a y squared minus h times y times a dy. And then that integral will be one third y cubed minus one half h y squared evaluated, that whole thing evaluated, h h plus little h. Okay, so we can plug the, the values in for that. I'm not going to go through the algebra of this, just it's tedious, but it's pretty straightforward. I think you know how to do it from that point. When you go through all that and you solve for the force, it'll just end up being rho g times w times a one-half capital H times a little h plus one-third little h cubed. I'm sorry, that's little h squared plus one half capital H over little h minus or plus one times oops times L squared. If I've done all my algebra correctly, that's the expression you should end up with. And then if you plug in the values that were given, so we're told that the so the density of water is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. G of course is nine point eight one meters per second squared. We're told that the width in and out of the page was three meters. We're told that the capital H height, the distance below the free surface to, to the hinge is three meters. We're told that little h is four meters. We're told that L is two meters. When you plug all those values in, you'll get that the force required to hold the gate in place needs to be at least 437 kilonewtons, or it could actually be larger than that and we'd still hold the gate in place, but that's the minimum force you'd need to have in order to keep the gate from swinging open due to the water pressure.
All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.